We are at Pueblo Motorsports Park in wonderful Pueblo, Colorado. We are here to shake down a 991 Turbo S, which we recently tuned for Porsche of Colorado Springs. They'll be racing at this year's Pikes Peak International Hill Climb. So Pikes Peak is the second oldest motorsports race in America. It actually started in 1916 as a way for the town to draw in tourists. And over its 93 years, has seen all sorts of vehicles. Cars, motorcycles, and even trucks. The race is almost 12 and a half miles long and climbs from around 9,000 foot at its start to just over 14,000 feet at the summit. I've been tuning for Pikes Peak for the past seven years, and this year we're excited to work with the 2014 991 Turbo S. Today we are meeting with Dave from Porsche of Colorado Springs. He is the one that is spearheading this whole project. Um, we've been working closely with him to uh, get the car prepared for Pikes Peak. We are also meeting David Donner. He's a longtime motorsports veteran of 27 years, and aside from his countless victories in multitude of racing, he is a four-time winner of the Pikes Peak Hill Climb. So this is what I'll be running in the Pikes Peak Hill Climb. It's a 991 Turbo S. Uh, we're running in the production class, which is called Time Attack 2 on Pikes Peak. Um, to do that, we have to remove the interior, all the interior items for you know fire safety, and it takes weight out. We'll be putting a roll cage in it. Otherwise, it's a stock vehicle. Ceramic brakes come with this car, the Pirelli tires, and obviously, important part, do some tuning. So the first time out, I was thinking I'd just go out, maybe do a couple of reconnaissance laps and just feel everything out, you know, just generally how the car's feeling. Um, I haven't driven it before, so. Yeah, to start, we'll just get you on track, um, just feel the car out a little bit, and then from there, we'll get, uh, the axis put on the car, and then we'll start to uh, gather data. Sounds like a plan. Alrighty. All right. Good luck. Thank you. <laughs> the most important thing uh, in Time Attack 2 production class is the driver and the tuning. As we're only able to modify the exhaust system, the brakes, and the suspension with Porsche factory parts, uh, we have to rely heavily on the tuning and the driver uh, to accomplish a solid race day. My hope out of testing for today is that we can verify the calibration that's on the car. We've already built the calibration in Southern California and we just need to make sure that it's sufficient for this elevation and we're not gonna run into issues related to the altitude or temperatures. Start of Pikes Peak is approximately 9,000 feet at the start line. So it's important for us to get some testing at a higher altitude. Where we're testing today is approximately 5,000 feet. So while it's still not the same elevation as the start line, it gives us a good idea of what we're gonna encounter uh, at Pikes Peak. How does it feel? <laughs> Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do I need to let it idle or is it? Uh, yeah, just let it run for a okay. minute and cool down. First yeah, I mean, first driving impressions. Um, it's incredible. The amount of torque is amazing. Yeah. Absolutely phenomenal. And it just it just keeps pulling, pulling, yeah. pulling, pulling. Um, especially out of the really tight turns and stuff. Okay. Um, you can feel the front sort of biting. Okay. You know, which is kind of a interesting sensation. I haven't run all wheel drive like this in a with this much power. Um, Handling wise, there are a couple things that are a little different. It kind of caught me off surprise. Unloading into a corner, the tail kind of wanted to come around. Okay. And that just might, it, it tried to swap ends on me. <laughs> okay. So, I mean, that's sort of something that picks up immediately. I'm not used to that. How do the temperatures look? Um, everything was sort of standard. Okay. All right, fantastic. Well, we'll get some computers and stuff in the car and then we'll start to push it and see how it does. So now we are getting the access port in the car and we're gonna to start to data log the parameters that we need, measuring ignition timing, uh, torque delivery. The other nice thing is it allows us the ability to chart his driving um, and see you know, consistencies, things like that. So right now I'm just setting up the access port to do those things and uh, we'll get him back out on track. The biggest challenges we face are generally uh, altitude and then just uh, air density is really hard. There's not a lot of oxygen towards the top so things start to overheat there's not a great way to cool them. Typically the cars uh, towards the top of the mountain will lose a decent amount of power. So the turbocharged cars tend to, tend to thrive well there due to the turbochargers, whereas a lot of the naturally aspirated cars towards the top will start to run out of steam just because they've lost so much power. 
Okay, so how did the car feel? Um, you know, it's strong. It's, yeah. it's very strong. There's no hesitation, good torque, no, Okay. You know. Everything looked pretty good on my end good in terms temps. of, um, you know, boost control, torque control, throttle angle and all that stuff is doing what you're requesting. Um, temps look good on my end as well. I mean, both engine and coolant temp, or um, engine and oil temperatures are around 200 degrees. So, you know, that's totally fine. manageable, yeah. totally good temps. So we're gonna make a few tweaks and we're gonna see if uh, we can get the car to go any faster. Well, the, the, the mapping that's in it, the car, um, I don't even, I can't read it because it, the boost gauge maxes out, so so it's strong. It's really strong. The thing is, is what I've learned is that you don't, you don't need to shift as much because the car's got so much torque that I, you really only have to shift a couple times. But so it's got so much torque, you can go into a corner in one gear and exit in the same gear and then shift up. All right, Dave, so how'd the car feel? Car felt great this last run. I mean, the, all the, uh, the sport mode t stayed on, the uh, traction control stayed off, and the uh, car was neutral. I'm still learning a few things about the all-wheel steering, but um, the power is exceptional. I'm, I mean, it's, uh, it's pretty crazy. Yeah, tune looks good. Um, I think we're gonna leave the calibration where it's at. Um, because of, you know, obviously the elevation change and even the start line is gonna be much higher than what we're at now. Um, I think us trying to push it any harder isn't going to be... Uh, not going to prove anything. Yeah, it's not going right. to do anything for us right now. So, right. car's running really well. Um, you know, there's no red flags on my end. We'll tear through the data. There's a lot of data. Um, and, you know, we'll keep testing. And once we get closer towards, you know, running to the top of the mountain, we'll start to, uh, start to push the calibration probably a little bit harder and see if the car can go a bit faster. All right, well, we're all done. We'll see you guys in a few weeks. All right, thanks, Mitch. Yep, thank you, guys. Thanks, Mitch.